Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And I just got back from the Luminar Adventure in Iceland last night. So I'm trying to catch up on things. And of course, while I was gone, there was an update to Luminar Neo. It's now updated to version 1.13.0. And uh, it adds some new stuff and it's got some updates and some changes. And I'm gonna run through those at kind of a high level and uh, just kind of catch up with you guys. I feel like I haven't sat here in ages. And uh, that's because I haven't sat here in a while because I was in Iceland. We had an amazing trip, got some fantastic photos. I think everybody in the camp had a really good time. And uh, anyway, those will be showing up uh, in some of the tutorials I'll be making here soon on my YouTube channel. So if you want to stay up to date on that, just be sure and hit the subscribe button. Uh, what I want to do today is, of course, talk about some of the updates. So the first one is Studio Light. I've got a wedding portrait here. No, I did not take this. Vanelli from Skyloom actually took this and is kind enough to let me use some of his photos in my uh, in my edits. Studio Light is in portrait, and there's honestly a lot you can do with this tool. So to be fair, this video is an update about all the evolution, uh, the continuing evolution really of Luminar Neo and all the cool stuff that's coming. And I will also say, I wanted to point out, um, obviously I spent a lot of time with the Skyloom folks uh, while I was in Iceland talking to them, including the VP of engineering and talking about what's coming to the platform because trust me, I have a long list of things. I was like, ooh, you should do this and you could do that and it'd be great if you did this and all that. And some of those got, yeah, we're doing that. And some of those were, you know, eh, I don't know. And some were like, maybe. Um, but for all the things that he said, uh, yeah, we're doing, I'm excited, my friends. I continue to be excited about this product and the platform and the direction that it's going because more cool stuff is coming. Anyway, back to Studio Light. So you basically have the option here, as you know, to mimic Studio Light, right? Artificially, or use artificial intelligence to, to create artificial light sources and create patterns in them and all that kind of stuff. That's where this light customization section comes into play. But if you hover, you can see I've got a dot here. I can reposition this dot. I can come over here and this little uh, white rectangle with the blue uh, square around it or blue outline, that represents that dot. So you can add multiple light sources. That's what this plus is for. Instead of hitting the plus, you can also just click in the photo. And as soon as I clicked in the upper left, you can see I've now got another one. So you're gonna be editing uh, with these controls, the one that's impacted or the one that's highlighted. So just keep that in mind. And of course, if you wanna get rid of that, you can just right click and hide or remove. I'm gonna remove and just go back to this one and I'm gonna increase the amount and you can see what's happening there. And that's a little harsh, but I'm doing a lot so that it's visible, right? So. Now, now that I've got that, I can reposition this and you can see how it's gonna impact the light on my subject as I move this uh, dot around. And you know, it's just it's really cool to be honest. And I'm not a portrait photographer, but still the innovation and the kind of cool stuff that they do, I think is really fantastic. You can adjust brightness and smooth it and light contrast. Uh, and the light customization is really cool. You can see that just created a pattern in the light. And that's because the pattern here selected is strips. You can also add some texture to it or add your own. So you could say greenery or a lace pattern and you can see how that's kind of changing things. You can especially see that on her face. To be clear, that doesn't look good in this photo. I realize that, but I want you to see all the different things. Shutters, so it looks like it's coming through it's like some wooden shutter. I mean, there's just so many things that you can do. So if you're a portrait photographer, uh, I think honestly, this is gonna be a game changing tool because you may not necessarily always have the light right or have it the way you want it or something and maybe things didn't go right, you can come in and artificially recreate that with Studio Light. That's now live here in 1.13.0 of Luminar Neo. Quite a nice update. And uh, if you guys wanna see some videos about that and about customization and all that for any of these tools, please leave a comment down below and let me know. Now that I've covered that, again, all of these are high level. This is kind of an intro, here's what's here now. But now that I've done that, I wanna jump into the second thing in this video and that's the blur tool. Okay, Blur Tool, I love the fact that this is here. And there's, I think, a lot of creative things that you can do. And like I said, if you wanna see videos about these kind of things, just leave a comment down below. Blur Tool is here and that's in the creative section. So I've got a puffin shot that I captured recently in Iceland. And let's say I just wanted to blur some aspects of this photo. Now I shot this at a fairly, uh, like a five point aperture of like 5.6, but let's say I didn't get quite enough blur in the background. Well, you could use the Blur Tool to come in and do that. You could also use it with layers to blur out a layer. I mean, there's just honestly a lot of things that you can do. I just, I'm excited about it. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, three types of blur, a blur. There's the Gaussian blur, the motion blur, and the twisted blur. 
To be fair, they're all not going to look good on this photo, but that's okay. I'm just going to show you how it works. So Gaussian blur, as you can see, you come in and you can just drag that and that's going to create that nice little soft background look. But of course, it's also hitting my lovely puffin friend. I don't want that. Well, that's the beauty here is you can come into masking and go into brush and click erase. And then I could come in here and just erase it from around the puffin. You can see what I'm doing there. And this is a very uh, much a hack job for lack of a better term in terms of uh, the actual masking. But I just wanted to show you that you can come in and remove it uh, or add it depending on whether you're using a paintbrush or uh, an erase brush. But you can just quickly come in and have that blur go into the background. Again, not an accurate masking job, but the point is you can come in and then you can customize this further, right? You could say, I want more blur or I want less blur. Maybe you just want a subtle, tiny amount of blur, like a 10, just to kind of accentuate that softer background so you can get a little bit better isolation of your subject from that background. So that's how Gaussian blur works. Motion blur, as you may uh, understand, of course, is it's gonna create a sense of motion. Again, not really a great example here. I mean. You could kind of make it look a little bit like um, something's happened. Maybe the wind's blowing too hard. I, I don't really think that would look very good here, but that's another type of blur. And then, of course, there's twisted, which is not going to look good here. So twisted blur, as I increase that, you can see all of this uh, kind of twist that's happening. You can also change the angle so you can create a really interesting twist with that whole circular kind of thing. And, of course, there's always the place blur center. It defaults to the center, but you can move it around if you want to in order to customize it. And once you have it set, you can, of course, click Place Blur Center to kind of lock it in. And on Motion and on Gaussian, you don't really need to worry about that. The Twisted is where you need the Blur Center. So again, those other ones don't really look good here, but the Gaussian Blur could look okay, right? At a low amount with a little bit better masking job, you can soften up those backgrounds. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think that's a great tool that you'll find lots of different ways to use. And again, I'll be back talking about that in future videos. Okay, now the other update, and this is great. I love this update. And that is to the Magic Light AI extension. This one came out right around the holidays. So people were using it to like pop all the lights on their Christmas trees and on streets and things like that. Um, but one of the things was it was kind of automatic. It was kind of a one and done. You drag the slider, you see the lights pop, but what if it missed some lights? You couldn't really do anything about it, but now they've updated that and included brush controls. So you can add stuff where it didn't exist previously. Here's a good example. This is just an unedited photo from Dublin and I'm going to do intensity pretty high. In fact, I'll just go to a hundred so that you can see it pretty easily. But if you will notice, I'm gonna zoom in here to let's say 200, that light right there and it didn't get anything. You can see by the way, when you zoom in, it's got these little uh, like squares of blue that kind of indicate where magic light is hitting, but it didn't hit that one. And that looks really dumb because it's not on that one. So this is where you come in and click add and you can choose, you know, select your brush size. I'm gonna keep it pretty small. And all you do is you just come in and you paint in there and as soon as you let go, it adds the magic light right there. So now it's flowing and it makes sense because they all have it. While I'm at it, I could add one here and I could add one there, you know, that sort of thing. So you could come in and add them where they didn't exist previously. You could just kind of click like crazy and just go have fun. I think all these other ones kind of show up and I think that's pretty cool. You know, you could add some over here on this where these lights are coming off of this storefront. Now, to be fair, I'm completely overdoing it in this example simply because I want to show you how it works. Now, you can also just click delete. So I could come in here and say, okay, that was dumb. That looks really bad. Let's take those out. Let's get rid of that. And, you know, that sort of thing. So it's basically a paint and erase function, uh, which, as I said already, and I've just shown you, gives you the ability to add it where it didn't previously exist. I love that because that was the thing that I heard the most when this first came out was people like, uh, people saying, well, I love it. It's cool. But like, what do I do if it misses a spot? Well, you can't really force it. Now you can for, oops, I didn't mean to click there. Uh, now you can basically force it. So that's the update to Magic Light. Super handy, super useful. And I think people are going to really get a lot out of that one. Now, the next update has to do with the panorama stitching uh, extension. And I love this. I, I was shooting some panos in Iceland. And in fact, um, I'm now in Lightroom, um, and that is because this pano stitching function is now available to those of you that are starting in Lightroom and using Luminar Neo as a plugin. So I've got a set of images here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And all you do is you come in and you highlight those. So I'm gonna have to do this individually. You can see I've already got a finished, uh, well, sort of finished. 
uh, but I've got a sort of a finished pano example here. But I come in and I highlight my images and I go to file and I go to export with preset. And down here you can see under Luminar Neo, you can edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, but you've got focus stacking, HDR merge, stitch panorama, and you've also got upscale. So all these things now are available to you if you're a Lightroom user. Maybe you have your catalog in Lightroom. Anyway, you just click stitch panorama and Luminar Neo, and it drags them all over there. It stitches it. Auto crop is now a default option, so it's automatically cropping. You can adjust it. Um, and then it takes you into the edit tab. You do whatever edit you want to do. You click apply and it drops it back as a TIFF file, as you can see here. So this is a 14,000 uh, pixels by about 6,700 pixel wide. And you can see here it is a TIFF file and, you know, it's stitched together beautifully. And I made a few basic edits in Luminar, just kind of playing around. Um, if you want to see a pano demo video, I'm more than happy to come back and I'll probably just use this image. I really like it. It was a beautiful sunset in Iceland. But the key thing there is pano stitching now available from Lightroom. And I think that's fantastic because a lot of you use uh, the Lightroom catalog, but you want to take advantage of some of these uh, tools in Luminar. Now that one works perfectly in conjunction with Lightroom. Now the next one is this kind of a minor update admittedly, but it's for a tool that I use a lot and that tool is toning. I've got toning right here and what you may recall is there used to be a different section where you had to uh, apply balance. They've just made it a little bit more uh, simplified. Uh, and balance, what it does is it allows you to, let's say, let me, let me give you an example. Uh, this is a sunset from Iceland, not from this trip, from but from my last trip. Uh, but toning, if you aren't familiar by the way, Toning allows you to pick the highlights and then the shadows separately and apply a color tone to each of them individually. It's a great way to really get a nice, uh, colorful, like beautiful look uh, in your photos. Now, I'll often go into highlights and add some red, especially at a sunset. And if I do a lot, you can see it really does a lot. I don't want to do that much, but let's say I go to 20, uh, whatever that is in shadows. Let's say I bring that up a little bit, but I'll often go a little bit cooler in the shadows, like around 225 or 230, which is kind of a blue. Um, the balance is, do you err more towards whatever color you put in the highlights or the color that you put in the shadow? So if I drag it this way, it's going to just favor, for lack of a better word, more of what I put into the highlights, which is, of course, the red stuff. Notice that when I go to the right, you know it's highlights because highlights is on that side. So highlights is that way, whereas if I take the balance to the left, you can see it gets a little bit more blue, and that's because the balance is tilting uh, towards the... Um, uh, the color that I put into the shadows. So it's a great way to kind of dial in your edit in addition to the saturation and hue sliders and the amount slider. Balance allows you to kind of say, well, I really like what I did with these two uh, tonal areas and the colors I selected, but maybe I want to do a little bit more overall look to the photo with what I did in the shadows, go left. Or maybe I like the warmth that I put into the highlights a little bit more. I want to do, I want to lean more in that direction than just go right with the balance slider. But it's a minor move, but balance is now just down here instead of in a, a menu up above, just cleaner and easier to get to. Outside of that, there's new camera support, there's bug fixes, there's all those kind of things. It's a great update, honestly. And like I said at the beginning, they're continuing to evolve this platform. I'm really excited about the future of it and some of the things that are coming and that they're working on. Um, I'm just continually to be impressed and blown away and of course excited about the product because I love it so much. So uh, that's my preview video. If you don't have it, they're still having a special offer that's kind of a back to school offer through September 11th. I'll put a link down below if you want to check that out. Thanks for watching my friends. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care and until next time, adios.